Hey, it's Moog here from Mighty Car Mods and welcome to my shed. So when I'm not at the Mighty Car Mod Shed with Marty working on cars, uh, I'm usually hanging out here, which is my own shed, but I do not do any car stuff here. I do um, lots of other stuff, which I will run through with you. Starting off with the construction, this here is a about six and a half meters by three and a bit. It's about 20 square meters all up. And uh, I've fully insulated it as well. So it's uh, insulated walls, ceiling, and the way that I've actually lined it is I've lined the whole thing with plywood because that means that you can mount stuff easily. Sometimes, you know, people do gyproc or whatever inside sheds, but then you're carrying wood around and you can bump holes in it and stuff like that. So I've done that and then I just gave the whole thing a bit of a whitewash, which was just white paint mixed with water because otherwise it felt like um, you were in a coffin. But having your walls like this is awesome because if you want to mount something, you literally just choose where you want to go and you just go bang and you mount it and it's done, which is really cool. So a friend of mine came and helped with the electrical. So we got lots of light up here and we've got lots of power points that are all um, at the bench height and I'll go through them shortly. Heaps of power there, lots of storage underneath. And all of the power is actually running from a big solar array. So there's around 10 kilowatts of solar and running a battery system as well. So uh, at nighttime, uh, this place is running off batteries, which I think is really cool. So during the day, the sun is pumping the solar uh, on top and that is charging all my Ryobi batteries over here. And so everything I'm making is kind of in that way, I don't know if you call it carbon neutral, but it means that all my projects are powered by the sun, which I think is really cool. So. Let me run you through the workshop, the shed. I'll show you how it's set up and hopefully give you some tips on how you can set up a mad shed for yourself at home as well. So around 15 years ago is when I set up my first shed with Marty. So this was a couple of years before we even started Mighty Car Mods. At that time, we were either working at a high school or working in a studio, I think. And this here was my very first bench. Now my shed was around two meters long and it was around 70 centimeters deep. So basically this bench took up the whole space. So I had this bench, I had some pegboard above it with some basic tools, and then I would be standing outside. So you'd kind of open the doors, these slidey doors. It was just one of those cheap ones that you kind of rivet together. So you'd open the doors and then the shed just had this bench in it. So since then there's been an evolution. I went from there to kind of a bit of a garden shed uh, and then eventually got a little bit more space for this. And this kind of houses all the different things that I need to do. Now, when you're setting up a shed at home, the first thing you kind of want to work out is what the purpose of your shed is. So I don't have any gardening stuff in here other than kind of a chainsaw or whatever, but like whippersnippers, mowers and all that stuff is in a separate gardening shed. This here is a maker space. Now the way that I've oriented the benches is I've oriented them in the direction that the shed flows. And what I mean by that is if you're carrying in a big bit of wood, basically you don't want to be getting your wood and loading it in here and then kind of having to turn it around to go on a bench the other end. So I can just come straight through the door, put it on the bench and that's ready to go. Particularly if I've got to use a miter saw or something, I can drop that up here. It's already in the direction that everything needs to go. So that's just kind of a basic ergonomics thing. And what I'd also say about making your shed comfortable is that in here I've got um, Wi-Fi, there's air conditioning, so there's good internet, there's good music, there's good sound. I think if you're going to spend some time in your shed, you may as well make it comfortable. And it's one of the controversial things that, again, well before Mighty Car Mods, Marty and I were working for uh, a magazine writing articles about setting up recording studios. And people would often ask us, like, what's the most important bit of kit? Like, what is the most important thing in a recording studio? And we wrote a big feature article about that. And our answer was a really good chair, like a really good studio chair. Because if you're going to be sitting in it for 8, 9, 10, 16, 18 hours a day, uh, which we often were, sometimes I've got to sleep in the studio in your chair in a sleeping bag, we wanted it to be really comfortable. So likewise, 
I want my shed to be really comfortable. I want it to be a good space. I want it to be laid out ergonomically. I want to be able to find everything where, uh, where and when I need it. So here is my very first workbench that I had. It's got a drill press on it. Underneath there's some storage of just things like um, there's gaffer tape, there's masks and PPE, super glue, just random things like that. Down this end, uh, I've got a little vise. It's mounted offset a little bit because of the way that this bench was constructed. This is always locked and the keys are up here, but this is just basically where more dangerous or chemical stuff goes. So in here, I've got my range of glues. Uh, I've got all my paints. I've got all my oils. There's the WD-40, no more gaps, things like that. So that all just goes boom in there. Um, on top of that, I've just got some concrete because a friend recently asked me to make them a circular uh, fire pit base out of concrete. And so that was made actually using uh, garden edging. So it works, um, works for body kits and works for molding uh, all sorts of cool things out of concrete and then using some of these, like some tie downs. So anyway, next up, um, I've got my lathe. So I've just started getting into doing some, you know, turning of wood, uh, making bowls and things like that. And actually it was a Mighty Car Mods fan that inspired that because I was at some markets recently, uh, but there was a Mighty Car Mods fan there who just started doing some wood turning. And, um, and I said to him, you know, how's it, um, how's it all going? And it was a market stall, he'd been there for five hours and he hadn't sold anything yet and so I, I bought something from him and we've got that at Mighty Car Mods and when we get in there and we put our keys in there and I thought this is really cool so I kind of got into that so that's there down here I've got a drop saw I've got a thicknesser um, I've been using those for um, years and years and years and then a couple of years ago got a bigger compound miter saw this shed by the way I said at the very start of the video you got to work out what your sheds for my shed is set up for home maintenance DIY, experimentation, a bit of electrical stuff. So there's no car stuff going on here. There's no welding going on here. It's just wood and fixing. So pretty much I have friends that are um, asking me to make them tables. So like outdoor tables, outdoor furniture. I have friends that ask me to help them make decks, to make screens, to make dining tables inside. Sometimes I get people who are saying to me, you know, like my great grandfather made this toy and now my other kid wants another one. Can you replicate it? So sometimes I'm getting something and pulling it apart and trying to make something else. These bench tops here, these are just from the hardware store. This is just, you can buy these as a panel. They cost like 70 bucks. I've made up these frames here for them to sit on. Actually, we've got a video on our second channel on MCM TV too, which is how to make these workbenches. Really simple, really cheap, really easy. You don't even need power tools. You can do them by hand, but obviously power tools makes it a little bit easier. Um, and the evolution of this shed is that it started with one bench, then started with two, then started with some more. And then my kind of little piece de resistance is this here. So I've made this big bench. This is made out of Tasmanian oak. Really proud of this. It's a really beautiful bench. It's just a nice tactile place to come and work. And it also has a stop on the back of it. And I think this is one of those simple things when you're setting up a shed, you don't want there to be gaps behind because otherwise you're working on things and you're losing stuff all the time. So these here are all bolted to the walls. And this here has a stopping plate on it so that if you're kind of working on something that is up against the back here, you can kind of give it a good hit to kind of hit things in. So moving into the tools, I've kind of got this laid out. Those of you who are a little bit handy out there might see that it's starting from measuring, then it's getting to cutting, then it's getting to assembling, and then it's getting to finalizing, assembling and fixing, and then it's getting over to the tools over there, which I'll get to shortly. So over here, I've just got my whiteboard, which is where you write all your notes. You need a whiteboard or a blackboard, or you need something just to write all your notes and stuff on. Um, Mighty Come Wads cable ties, gloves, first aid kit, got my music up here. Over here, I've just got all my screws and I've laid them out in a kind of an order where they start from small and go to larger. So these are starting at 20 mil and going up to 100 mil. And then there's different gauges because I just want to be able to go, you know what, I need a 40 mil 8G. And so you go, cool, one, two, three, four, there's the 40 mil. There they are. And these here are just the packets they come in. And some people say, oh, they always fall down. Do I stick them on? You can. Or another little trick is you just hold them up, tip all your screws down. And then when it goes back in, it's now held in place. Just a cool little tip. I've also got lots of, um, lots of just little random bolts and stuff like that. Nothing like Marty's Bowerbird selection that we have down at Mighty Car Mods because his collection of stuff is 
very, very impressive. But for the basic stuff, I've got to do fixes and repairs and things, uh, you know, I've got that. And then over here, these are my grandfather's. I've just got a selection of tins um, that have just got lots of nails and different bits and pieces in them. And um, they're just, again, they're really cool because they're old. So over here, we're going to marking and measuring over here. We got speed squares, set squares, saws. Um, tapes, a lot of people, they kind of go, I'm gonna buy a tape. The thing is, you always need lots of them. And the reason that you need lots of them is because sometimes uh, I do lots of my work outside because I have my gear so it's portable. You wanna take it outside, you're measuring something out there, then you wanna measure something else in here. And why I've got doubles of things, you might see that we've got kind of two of these and two of these is because ideally you want your mates to come and hang with you as well. And so particularly with PPE, you don't want to be arguing about, you know, who gets it, the person on the drop saw or the person on the router. And so I try and double up with all of that stuff. So as we move along, you've got a variety of different saws, you know, everything from cutting gyprock, which they call dry drywall, I think they call it in America, but that's a weird term. Um, then hacksaws. Here is for cutting off little um, uh, pieces of dowel. So if you're kind of doing hidden joints and stuff like that, then that's a really beautiful saw for cutting those off. And then just your standard kind of saws for cutting bits and pieces. Pens and pencils uh, with a little box that I made. I'll show you how I made that shortly. A variety of different hammers. You need lots of hammers. I don't have as many hammers as Marty. Not that it's a competition about who has the most hammers or whose hammer is the biggest, because it really is about how you hit the nail in with it. Up here, probably my two most used tools um, is my Ryobi drill and Ryobi driver. They've always got batteries on them. They're always right there. They're hanging there like gunslings because you just pick them up, boom, you're ready to go. You're drilling holes with this, you're driving in that. I have had those for years and years and years and you can tell they're getting pretty hammered, but uh, they both are still working and they're both going strong. So I got them. A variety of different spanners and things that are supplemented with some other ones. This is just the stuff that I want to be able to get to kind of regularly and easily. A bunch of screwdrivers. Again, more PPE. I want it close. I want to be able to grab it when I need it. Uh, hence why I've got goggles here if I'm doing some routing or something. And then I've got my gloves over here. And then WD-40 because you always need it. And I'm really proud of this because, you know, WD-40 um, has been a, a brand that everybody's known for years and years and years. And we're really proud to become part of the WD-40 lineage with the Mighty Car Mods can. And I feel really, really proud of that. I think that's really cool because it's just, I don't know, it's us on a can and it's awesome. So I like that. Over here, again, there's some more protective gear. And this is the Ryobi wall. Now, what's probably funny is somebody's probably looking at this right now and going, he must be sponsored by Ryobi. And I am. But there is not one thing on this wall that is a sponsored product. So everything here I owned either before our sponsorship or I have purchased it. There is nothing here. Oh, actually, maybe, maybe the workshop blower. I think that might be the, let me sit that right there. There is nothing on this wall that has been a uh, sponsored item because I owned all of this stuff first. And that's the interesting thing. We often get people saying, I want to start a show or I'm a race car driver. How do I get sponsorship? The thing is, if you genuinely really like a product and you've been using it for ages, it's easy. And I'll never forget, I was actually in this shed when I was having a chat with someone for Ryobi for the first time. And I sent them a photo of this wall and they're like, oh, okay, it's legit. So I think if you're thinking of approaching a company, whether they make underpants or chocolate or whatever it is, if you actually use it and you legitimately use it, then do what you need to do. There's lots of tools up here. This I use all the time, circular saw, the nail gun's awesome. Um, everything that I need to grab and just want to get quickly is right there. The way this is set up is I want to really quickly be able to go, I want to grab this, I need a pencil, I want to grab that, and then just go. And I want power right here and close to it as well. Now, down here I've got some clamps, I've got paper towel, and probably my favorite tool in here, Ryobi vacuum. I'm going to talk more about that soon because I've got a couple of favorite tools that I'll run through at the end of the video. While I've got my big vacuum down there, I've also got a smaller one that sits up here uh, on top of the bench. And that's just something that's really portable and easy to move around if I'm cleaning up uh, things uh, as I'm doing them. In here, uh, an old Australia Post satchel. And inside here, I've got lots of rags and also the um, Mighty Car Mods microfiber cloths, which you can get from the Mighty Car Mods website. And then just lots of cut up stuff that's used for cleaning up spills applying oils, things like that. Uh, this is a Tool Pro tool case. This is huge. It's freaking massive. Why have I got this one when I know a lot of you are probably saying, hey, isn't there a Mighty Car Mods toolbox? I missed out. I didn't get one. 
they sold out. So there was, we have a special edition Mighty Car Mods Toolbox by ToolPro, uh, and I let everyone know about it on Facebook, and uh, Marty and I were like, hey, go grab one, and we even gave one away that we signed, and then it was only a few days later, or maybe a week later, I was like, I actually want one of them myself. No. Uh, I didn't get one of my own toolboxes, uh, unfortunately, so maybe in the future I will. That there is our Mighty Kamoz chopped, uh, chopped fingers, they're little toolbox things. We might try and find a way to give you all one of them for free, I reckon. Like, um, we're going to work out how to do it. Check the description, I'm going to let you know how I can give you a toolbox, one of them for free. Over here we got clamps, heaps of clamps because they're awesome. Up here we've got a Mini Cooper steering wheel from Japan that we found. Um, I love Japan, I have a real affinity with Japan and goats like two separate things, um, and um, hence why I've got some kind of transport signs and other stuff from Japan that Marty and I've collected on our travels. Uh, let's go through the toolbox quickly. Up the top, we've just got some junk. We've got more things that, um, you know, cutting holes, there's gloves, there's cable ties, you know, Marty Cumwads tape, things like that. Uh, moving down over here, I got all my sanding stuff, so from 40 grit up to 240. Uh, if you do need to sand in weird places, you can also get a paint stirrer and you can get a glue gun and you can just glue a piece on there and that lets you get into weird places, which is kind of cool. So that's all my sandpaper. Um, over here is uh, drill bits specifically, and then the next one is um, more drill bits, drivers, stuff for, you know, multi kits of things, how to get through walls. Um, this is my favorite tool here. I'm going to show you them at the end. I'm going to show you them at the end because that's just, I love those things. Um, down here, I got my Craig pockets, uh, pocket jig. So this, so Craig is kind of like a tool that lets you attach things in a new kind of wacky way or, or a unique way, but it's really quick, really efficient. I got a torque wrench in there as well. I know I don't do much car stuff in here, but I do do like motorbike service and things like that. So I do have, you know, basic tools for that stuff. Uh, down in here, I've got my, um, got my planes and I've got more Ryobi stuff that I just don't need all the time in here. So, you know, impact wrench, another driver. Uh, down in here, I've got my, um, and you might've seen these on the main channel as well. These are my ratcheting spanners. Uh, ratcheting spanners are awesome. And these here, they're good value. They're tool pro, they're from Super Cheap Auto, they work. I don't need them a lot in here compared to car stuff, but when you do need to get to something and you wanna make it easy, like a ratcheting spanner is definitely the way to do it. Uh, down here, got stuff for attaching things to walls, rivets, staple gun, um, a few more tools in there, bits and pieces. This is my electrical stuff. I've got a proper electrical kit that you've probably seen at Mighty Car Mods, but this is just the basic stuff for home. Heat shrink, um, a kit that's got kind of things for like uh, disassembling computers and phones and stuff like that. I don't use that heat because I'm usually breaking things more than I'm fixing them. In here, I've just got a fan, which I use when I'm drying things. Um, I've got a couple of these because they're really handy, particularly when we're uh, camping. And then I've got a Ryobi inflator, which you've probably seen on the main show. And then a big belt sander, which I do when I'm kind of doing um, big dining tables and stuff like that. And they just kind of really need to eat into them. I got that. And now we're moving on to the most technologically advanced thing in the room. Um, this here is my Carvey. And so this here is a basically a computer controlled carving device that can carve out of a variety of different materials. And it's cool because it closes up so it keeps it fairly quiet and keeps it fairly, uh, fairly contained. So in here you can make everything from things out of wood, uh, you can make uh, bottle openers, you can do all sorts of things. That's a really cool online piece of software where you can design things up. So whereas 3D printing is kind of additive construction, that is subtractive. So you're putting something in there and it's actually cutting it away. So this space here is left because I bring my laptop in here and I've got all my cables. Again, I want it super efficient so I can just use those. And up here is where I keep my stock. It's got a working space of like 20 by 30 centimeters. And then in here is all my Carvey tools. So I've got different bits in here. I've got vernier calipers and then I've got all the different materials for it, you know, for making, I don't know, chopping boards or making designs or... Of course, when you've got one of these things, it's like having a ute and everybody asks you if they can use it or if they can borrow it. So that kind of happens all the time. Uh, down underneath, uh, I got my table saw. I got, you know, some workbenches and stuff. And then I've got a bag, which is always empty. And this here is easy to grab because invariably what happens is I'll get a call and someone will go, can I borrow your ute? And can you make me a deck? I've had to kind of learn the skills from watching YouTube videos and stuff like that. So, you know, it's it's been fun. It's been a learning curve, but it's always um, measure twice, cut once, but I'm usually 
than cutting three times and then going to buy some more stuff when I make a mistake. Uh, so that's that end of the room. I'm going to show you a couple of little things on this end of the room uh, and then I'm going to show you my favourite tools. So let's have a look down this end. So in your workshop, one of the main things that you've got to manage is where you store all your supplies and stuff. For this, that's kind of mostly a fixing stuff around the house and a wood workshop. The main things that I need are wood, but because I don't have heaps of space, I'm usually just buying it for the project that I need and I'm not storing lots of it. I don't really want to fill the roof with like lots of storage, but it is one way that people do, kind of sticking it all up there, but I like it having kind of open and feeling comfortable in here. So I've just got a little storage area over here that's got kind of off cuts in it. There's some short bits down there. And then here's where I keep all of my dowel because I do lots of kind of hidden, you know, hidden joins and things like that. And over here, uh, and I've got to do a shout out to Colin Furs because he inspired this and I was like, this is freaking awesome. This sanding station used to be sitting on this bench over here and it would just kind of blast all of its mess over here or sometimes I'd try and vacuum it outside. But he has it mounted on a door like this and I was like, that is such a good idea. And I've got my blower here because what that means is, is that I can open this and when this swings out, I can actually be working outside. So that whole thing can swing out and I can be doing my sanding outside and then just use that and blast it out. I've also got power on the outside of this building as well because I'll take my miter saws, my sanders, all those kinds of things and I'll do as much as I can outside. And when I'm working outside, I've just got a really simple little workbench that looks like this. And I basically take that outside, set that up, clamp all my work pieces onto it and I can do all my work outside and it saves just kind of all the mess because most kind of professional or even really good amateur setups, people have proper dust extraction systems. Um, I don't, I've just got a shop vac which I connect to the equipment as I go. Which brings me to the last point. I'm gonna show you my three favorite tools that I have in here. So number one uh, is uh, these chisels. So these were my grandfather's chisels and um, and he was awesome. He's, he passed away a couple of years ago, but he was the biggest Mighty Car Mods fan. He was in his late 90s and he would contact me and he'd say, I saw you on the telly or I saw you in the newspaper. And he'd always ask really engaging questions and he, he never missed an episode. And so um, he left me these. And so whenever I'm working on projects with these chisels, I kind of feel like there's something really special. So recently um, uh, I made a spice rack and I used his chisels and then I used all of his old nails and stuff to join it. It was just a really nice way of kind of, I don't know, reliving the stuff that he went through. And I, I think it's kind of very different times, whereas now you can just buy tools and throw them away. And he came from an era that, you know, he was, um, he was in the war and there was obviously lots of unemployment afterwards and he'd gone basically deaf from running machine guns and lots of his friends had died. And, and he would kind of go back into his shed and, and he'd make stuff. And I think that's something we're really lacking now that you kind of buy things and throw them away. And regardless of what your skill or what your ability is, I think there's something about going into a space that's your own space and making something, even if it doesn't work out, but just using your hands and making stuff that I think uh, can be lacking. And I think, um, yeah, I think that's really important. So when I use these, it just kind of reminds me to keep, keep things simple. And so I love using those. Uh, uh, my next favorite tool uh, here is uh, this shop vac. So this here, I used this recently to run uh, when I was installing some hardwood flooring for someone. Really powerful, surprisingly quiet. Shop vacs are normally so loud. So I had another one for years and it sounded like, it just sounded like a tornado. This is really quiet. It's really powerful. It comes with lots of different settings. Yes, Ryobi is a sponsor of the show, um, but no one has asked me to tell you this. I'm telling you this because I'm very confident that if you got one of these, you would go, yes, okay, I agree. That's freaking awesome. And then the last thing, I'm going to show you my favorite tool in this workshop and what I believe will be your favorite tool as well. This is, I think if you're going to have a shed at home, regardless of whether you're doing cars, whether you're doing wood, whether you're fixing stuff, this is the one tool that I think everybody needs. Stay right there and I'm going to show you because this here, this is, this is a game changer as far as I'm concerned. Are you ready everybody? I don't know if you can buy these. I think maybe you have to steal them. I didn't steal it. But anyway, here it is. The number one tool that you should have in your shed, a milk crate. I'm telling you, this here is freaking awesome. This is a painting stand. This is a storage device. This is a stool to get up, to get on things. This is something that you can put wood on and you can drill through. Um, 
One of these is just a super, super handy thing to have. They can just, they're super versatile. They can do lots of different things. And it's funny because people are always like, I need a special jig to do ABC. Quite often you don't. You can use this, you can put it that end to paint on, this end you can clamp on, you can put a bit of wood, you can saw through it, um, you can attach miter gauges and stuff to it to go on different angles. And um, I think it's just a really, really handy thing to have. So there it is. That is my shed. Um, thank you very much for having a look, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope everybody that's in lockdown in different states is kind of doing okay. And uh, next episode, we will be back to our usual programming, back to the Mighty Car Mod shed. But um, there it is. That is my shed. That's where I like to hang. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'd like to say thank you to Marty also for taking a tour of his shed and also for filming this video and letting me talk and tell you all my stories. And I would love to hear about your shed and particularly if you've got any mad points about your shed because a lot of the ways that I've learned how to set this up have come from watching other videos and comments. So if you've got any comments about awesome workshop tips, whether it's about lighting, extraction, tools, storage, organization, um, please let us know in the comments and hopefully we get a bit of a compendium. In fact, what we might do is get all the best stuff and turn it into a blog post of some awesome shed tips. So please put some tips down below. And of course, um, the coupon code for you for the next week is going to be SHED. When you type that in, you're gonna get some, I don't know what you're gonna get, but you'll get something. So we'll work it out. By the time you see this video, it will be working and we'll leave that on there for a week or so. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for watching the show and uh, back to cars. What do we got car-wise next time, Martin? Or is, oh, it's not a car. I mean, it is a car, but it's a, it's a vehicle. No, it's a car, isn't it? There's some stuff happening and it's turbo. It's good. All right. I'm totally stealing this. Are you? Yoink. Bye. All right, Thanks. bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. bye.